Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash doctrine. That's where you go, audibletrial.com slash doctrine. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I am the cultural architect of Redeemer Fellowship. <laughs> what? St. Charles, Illinois. Okay. And I, I don't even know how to respond to that. How do you, how do you, how do you follow up? Uh, I am Jimmy Fowler, uh, life catalyst and overlord of Redeemer Fellowship. I'm, a, I'm an elder candidate. You ever see that? You ever see that? Like, I remember there was this guy. Uh, don't call people out. No, no. I don't remember his name. Uh, but the church was Mosaic. He's written a bunch of books. And, uh, and I, no, I mean, I'm not calling him out. Uh, he described himself not as like lead pastor, senior pastor, but as cultural architect. And, what does that even mean? Like, well, he that in other words, he is the leader that is helping to develop or create a culture in this church yeah. that, and to put it in the best possible light, you know, that honors the Lord and is making disciples and all that stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, man, I ain't got time for those silly titles. Uh, pastors fine and uh, elders fine. Like we're, we're good with that. How you doing, man? How's your week? Yeah, uh, week's been good. You know, um, it's been. Schedule has been nice. Like it, I'm kind of easing back into things. Um, got some 2015 financials all squared away and everything done. So I'm wow. kind of happy about that. And Sounds so boring. looking forward to uh, part two here at worship. Got to talk about worship, man. We uh, we love we love corporate worship. Mm-hmm. We really do. Um, and we're blessed to be at a church that um, does not put on a great show. We no. it, it now. The, I think the music is great. The musicians are very talented. Exactly. Uh, in fact, they, a lot of them are performers. You know, that's they, they do this. They make money and they go out and they play. But, they but are, they're not performing on no, Sunday. No, they're not putting on a show. Uh, they do very, very well. Mm-hmm. But they're all very consciously working to make much of Jesus and to not make themselves uh, a distraction for worship. So, man, uh, we're just we're blessed. You know, we've got mm-hmm. people that sing. People sing in our church, man. That's right. You can hear the whole congregation sing loud, and we're plugged in. We've got drums, we've got bass, we've got two electric guitars, uh, sometimes two, sometimes an acoustic. We've got bass, and you can hear the congregation in all of that loud. It's it's awesome. It. So on Monday we talked about what uh, worship is. We talked about corporate worship. We talked about why is it important and the principles that govern uh, redeemers worship, as as well as what is our liturgy. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's that's fun, man. I, I like the liturgy. I like having a, a structure, a formal structure that kind of guides us through, mm-hmm. um, you know, what what we're actually doing here. From you know, like the Puritans, they had this, um, you know, all, their model in corporate worship was, you know, if you were to simplify it, it was guilt into grace and into yeah. gratitude. You know, there'd be the reading of the law, the reading of the Ten Commandments, reading of the Old Testament passage. And um, so they would see that they are fallen and broken and lost and condemned apart from God's mercy. So they move from guilt into grace, and that's where the Gospels are read and the promises of the Gospel are made clear and Christ's atoning sacrifice Mm -hmm. is is held up, and that leads them into gratitude. And we're going to talk about some of that uh, today on the episode. I'm looking forward to it. Let's get started. So the way that every, every church has a liturgy, every church... Uh, when they gather, there is a particular kind of structure. Uh, so, like, there is maybe there will be a reading of scripture, which is a good biblical thing. Maybe they'll sing a couple of songs, take up an You're offering. Right. There is a worship app. Yeah, don't tell me there. I know what's going on, man. Hey, you guys. Um, <laughs> every, so every church has has a has a lead, has a liturgy, a structure to their corporate worship. Ours. Uh, we didn't invent. It's been floating around for a while. In fact, one of our church plants, our first church plant, implemented this, and we saw them doing it, and we thought, oh, we're going to do that as well. Um, we were about two years old as a church, and we thought they are killing it with that. So basically, um, our worship service has uh, several different sections, and they're broken down as follows. We have a section called Revelation, and then a section called Adoration, which follows, and then Confession, Expiation, Proclamation, 
supplication, dedication, and commission. And everything that we do, the from the reading of Scripture to the responsive readings mm-hmm. to um, the, the songs that we sing, everything that we do, number one, is leading us in a particular direction that is generally established by the sermon or the text that is being preached that day. And we kind of go through that. We plan that yes. ahead of time. We have our monthly worship planning meetings. Yeah where uh, you have already given to the worship leaders, here's the text, here's the theme, here's the kind of the main idea. Yeah. Um, and then they come prepared for that meeting to plan out the next four weeks. Yeah, exactly. That's the, and that's really helpful for us um, to do that. So, And then when you're in each one of these sections, so if you're in Revelation, um, this is the reading of God's word. It highlights the character and the work of God. And so... Any, any reading or any song is focusing on theology proper, essentially. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, when it gets into adoration, uh, this is you know songs of praise, of joy, um, of, of rejoicing in, in who God is. And, and it involves scripture readings that uh, and, and may include corporate uh, readings or, or responsive readings yeah, as which well. Which I love. I don't, I don't know what it is. I love responsive readings. Yeah, that's um, – It's my favorite. I like it. My wife, she loved it. I mean, she grew up in Germany, going to a German church, and you know, mm. that was really big there. And she loved every aspect of it—the benediction, um, oh, yeah, you know, it. that the pastor would would say over the people, and you know, the back and forth. And I feel like there's some. Ah, okay, now I'm going on. I just feel like there's something about the corporate body reciting together uh, this truth, right? It can be a. It's just powerful. It can me. be the Apostles' Creed. I get it the feels be, then. That's when I get the feels. Yeah. It stirs your heart. Yeah. It stirs your heart, man. Everybody you know, in unison, loudly declaring mm-hmm. these truths, uh, you know, proclaiming God's excellencies. That's right. Um, what are some of the things we use since we're talking about it? What are some of the things that we use in our responsive readings? So we obviously we use scripture. We use scripture, but we also use uh, the Valley of Vision. Yeah, we do. You know, uh, a great uh, set of Puritan prayers that's broken down, you know, into sections and topics or right. however you want to call it. They've also got like a week guide. Uh, at the end there, right? Like how you can, you could pray these certain prayers for seven days. Um, and they got it for like different situations and things like that. So, uh, I love it. I think we talked about that before, but maybe we haven't. Yeah. So we, um, we, we use the Valley of vision. We, we use, use the Valley of vision. And I think that there's also, I think we've talked about it cause there's that, there's the guide that you, that yeah, that, you I, made. We talked about it. Okay. But either way, the Valley of vision, fantastic, great resource. 1689. 1689 or, or, or other reformed confessions, yep. you know, that when it's useful. So, yeah, we, we, we and so, um, you know, responsive readings where it's back and forth, call and response or corporate readings where we all say it in unison together at the same time. That can happen in adoration. It can happen in confession or any one of these sections. Now, Jimmy, when we're talking about this section of confession, we start with revelation. We go to adoration and then we hit the section called confession. It says it right there in our bulletin confession. What are mm-hmm. we doing there? Um, we are confessing together our sins. We're confessing together uh, our lack of adoration and reverence for God throughout the week uh, or, or as things come to mind. And so usually uh, you will or one of the other elders or uh, uh, mainly that will lead us in that time where you call us to to repentance and to confess your sins and you uh, and you will lead in that. So we'll we'll join. We'll be praying along with you. Um, and then what's great is that leads then into the next section, right? Which is expiation expiation. And that is where we take communion yeah. together. Now, now listen, people are not going to like this. Oh, what that we do it every week. No, no. The reformed guys are not going to like this. Why? Because we do the Lord's supper before the sermon. Oh, oh they are not. See, they're tripping right now. Triggered triggered. Oh man. <laughs> So, yeah, we, we confess our sins. We confess Christ. This leads into the next section, and that is the Lord's Supper. We do this every week. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've written on this at length on the blog. We'll link to that if you want to read a little bit of that. But um, we choose to have um, the Lord's Supper here uh, under expiation for a, a few different reasons. Number one. This whole section is about Jesus Christ and his atoning work on the cross. Mm -hmm. The songs that we sing, the scriptures that we read, uh, the Lord's Supper, of course. 
It's all focused on the cross. And we put ex, we, we put the, uh, the Lord's Supper before the sermon because all this time, the children are with us. Yes. The children oh, are with talk us. Talk about this. Now, you've got, we've got like zero to, zero to three Zero to three are in like nursery if they want. If you want your little ones to be in nursery the whole time, that's fine. Mm-hmm. They can they can be playing and hanging out with our caregivers. But uh, four years old and up, everybody's in there for revelation, adoration, c- confession, and expiation. And we want kids to be present yes. for the, for communion, and we want them to see their parents worshiping. They we want them to learn that because when it comes to the sermon time. Uh, they are then dismissed and they go to their classes that are age appropriate. It's targeted gospel theological teaching for them that they can comprehend. Uh, So um, we, we, we put communion where we put it because um, ultimately scripture doesn't say where we need to put it. Yes. Traditionally it has gone after the sermon, Mm -hmm. but for us in our context, we like it better here. So it goes communion and then um, other songs about Christ and then that leads into proclamation. The next. And hold section. on, I want to say that just this part. Yeah, back to communion. I know I've mentioned this before. I'm going to say it again, and I know I talk about it a lot. I love the way we do it. I love the fact that the kids are there, and I love that like when you know our my kids come up with me mm-hmm. with Michelle and I. Michelle and I will take the elements. So how old are your kids? Uh, Cohen is five. Elias is three. And, and you have another kid. I have another kid, Ariana, who's two, but she's in. But you don't count her because she's a girl. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she wouldn't count in Japan. Weird. So we're it's China, you dummy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you're gonna offend everybody. <laughs> Triggered. <laughs> All right. All right. So you take your little kids up with you. But I take because little... we go forward for communion. That's it. We come forward, and you you direct us like an airline stewardess yep. to let us know how. But hotter. Can... And so we go up together. Uh, Michelle and I will take the elements. We'll go back down the sides. We'll sit down in our seat, and we have our children in front of us, and we ask them, what are we doing? What does the bread signify? What does the cup signify? And what does this ultimately point to? And so they, 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 they say that. They share with us that well, the, you know, this is, the bread is, is Jesus' body broken for us, that the cup is Jesus' blood that was spilled for us that this tells us about how much God loves us and that he saved us. And they always are reminded and they tell us uh, one day Jesus will come back for us and we will be with him forever. And that's what I want them to know is that we are forgiven for our sins, that daddy makes mistakes, mommy makes mistakes, you guys make mistakes. uh, But Jesus died on the cross for our mistakes. Cause I, you know, I'm trying to teach them the word sin. I have to start with mistakes. Um, and so they, they get that, then they watch as, and then I'll pray, you know, I'll pray for, for us as a family. They'll pray with me. Uh, and then Michelle and I will partake and then they're, you know, they're, so they're what do you tell them when they go, Hey dad, what, when, when do I get, when do I get the cracker? Uh, they used to ask that question. Uh, and they would kind of almost, Colin would kind of give a fuss. He almost cried a few times. Like, cause in his, at first he's like, why don't I get the, why, why can't I have juice? Like, why is everyone having juice but me? Yeah. It's snack time. And uh, now they, they have a, an understanding that this is for those that have, uh, that God has worked in their hearts and has called them to himself. We tell them one day, prayerfully, hopefully, Lord willing, uh, God's going to call you to, to himself. And this is a, this, this. This is what those that have been called by God do and share in together. Yeah, we, we do because uh, we, we have four kids and we, they all ask the same thing. Yeah. And we did, we did something similar. Um, we, we respond pretty much the way that you do in terms of bringing the kids together and having them explain it. And, you know, Killian now, he's our youngest. He's always the first one to say, Jesus body, Jesus blood. And I'm like, all right, but what's happening here? Mm-hmm. And so when they would ask, though, when can I have communion? Why can't I have communion? We would say uh, in simple in terms, like once you're baptized, oh, that's a good way of putting it. Then, then you can have communion. And they're like, well, when can I get baptized? Mm-hmm. When you're ready to stand before the church and tell them that you're following Jesus for the yeah. rest of your life. You know, when you come to that place where, cause like they're all going to say that they believe like, that's and, right. I, and I, I'm not going to doubt that they believe that's until right. it's made evident that they don't. But yeah, that's how we put it for them is, just, you know what? When uh, when you've been baptized, then you're ready. 
And uh, so, yeah, none of our kids have had communion until they're baptized. You know, so now, right now, two of them, two of the four have been baptized, and the other two have not. And, yeah, I, mean, I think that's in, you know, you waited until they were ready for that. And I know some places will, will do it earlier. Some, I, I grew up Roman Catholic. They would talk about that age of reason, you know, being at seven is when you're able to articulate the gospel. Somehow you turn seven, you're able to articulate and understand it uh, and be judged accordingly. Um, but I know for, for us and for you, you know, we've talked about that, that, uh, it's, it's different for each child, you know, Eli would have said, you know, Eli has, has always been honest with you. Uh, and then when he, he find what is it? 13? No, no, he's 12? not even, he's not 13 yet. How old is that kid? He's 12. He, dude, he is so much more mature than you. Yeah, he is. No, Eli was always like, I don't know that I believe. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure that God is real. Um, you know, we didn't beat him up for that. Um, we just loved on him and said, well, you know, just keep, keep you share the gospel. You loved yeah. your child. Keep reading your Bible and, you know, um, seek the Lord, be patient and all of that. And so, yeah, we basically will baptize children when the children are saying, Hey, um, I believe in Jesus and I need to get baptized. Yeah. So, um, generally a though, profession of faith, a genuine uh, yeah. or as genuine as you yeah. can uh, discern. Yeah. If, if I, if, if I believe they're converted and they want to be baptized and their parents aren't pushing them into it, then I'm, I'm pretty much ready to go. All right. Proclamation. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, the preaching and the proclaiming of God's word and what he has done. Right. So really important for us. That's the, all of this is critically important, but that really is the centerpiece in our mind. It's a very Protestant idea. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the, the central, so we call it proclamation. And then after the sermon, we have a time of supplication, which is usually the one who's been preaching, uh, will pray after the sermon, uh, you know, pleading with God for grace to um, uh, respond appropriately yeah. uh, and to be impacted by the truth that the Spirit would go to work. And then we move into dedication, right? And this is when we're singing songs uh, of commitment yeah. or, uh, you know, reading Scripture together that's emphasizing, you know, how uh, God calls us uh, to follow Christ in faith and repentance. And the very last thing we do is commission. What's that? Uh, that's usually like the closing benediction, right? Yeah. Where, where usually you or one of the elders will, uh, will stand before the body and kind of give that, I don't know if this is the, you know, it's a blessing. The, the blessing. Yeah. yeah. Just the, the final blessing, I guess. And sending people off. And I think that's the important part. You're sending people off in that, you know, it's kind of the close of the service, but also, uh, the start of the week. Yeah, they're not dismissed. Yeah. It's like, no, now it's time to go. Now it's time now to go it's... and do. Yeah, right. right. So that's our, that's our basic structure for, um, for worship. And um, that's, I think it's pretty, pretty fair uh, to say that it works well for us. Our people like it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not for everybody. And no. It's not the only way to do it, but we definitely enjoy doing it. All right. So, Jimmy, I think we're going long. Um, let's let's try and let's try and answer just a couple of questions that we have written down here. All right. Let's do this. Um, let's I'll, go. With I'll ask you. I'll all right. You asked me. Here we go. So uh, one question is, is, how do you prepare for corporate worship? You know, your Sunday, it's a big day. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you do to get to get, to get yourself ready? If if you do something like some some days we don't. We some days forget, we just don't. Busy. Um, it's, it's a mistake. I think. Yeah. And I. I for those that don't, I want to encourage you and I want to encourage me <laughs> to uh, be looking to prepare, right? Like make sure you plan out uh, what your Sunday morning is going to look like. Because especially if you've got kids, man, it's hectic. Kids don't listen. You got to get them ready. You got to brush their hair. Oftentimes in my church, our church can attest to this. My kids come in, their hairs are a mess. You know, the hair is a mess. My kid has two different color shoes on if they even have shoes. You know, like we just carry them in, We're like whatever, just get in there. Um, so part of that, I think part of it is the night before is uh, Michelle tries to uh, take the clothes, you know, lay out their clothes, get their shoes, put it all together. Um, and we all, so we do that the night before. We also when we're putting the kids to bed, letting them make sure they understand tomorrow we're going to church. Tomorrow's Sunday. We're going to church. Church day. That's church my day. Called it. Yeah. We're going to wake up. We're going to have breakfast. Uh, we're going to get ready. And then we're going to go to church. Um, and so we prepare that the night before. The morning of, for me personally, um, as, I'm, as I'm going through my devotions, uh, I will also begin praying for whoever's speaking. Because I know, I, part of me is I, I know the text, right? Like I have that inside track. So I know who's preaching and I know what they're preaching on. 
uh, and I'll and I'll pray for them. And I'll, I'll sometimes send them a note saying, "Hey, especially if it's a guest speaker, you know, I don't get any notes because you're not a guest." Okay. Uh, but I'll I'll send them a message saying, "Hey, man, praying for you." Um, and I'll do that often as well for our other church plants. I don't know what they're preaching on. I might right. have a general idea, but I'll I'll be praying for them. So, so I I but the important things there are I look at the text. I look at the text myself at home, begin gathering my thoughts on the text, praying through that passage, praying for the preacher. Um, and then, yeah, that that's kind of how I prepare. I don't, there's nothing else that I do. It's just a lot of it has to do with the night before. And so you, you pray for the preacher. Do you pray for yourself? Do you pray for the... For like no, your, I don't need prayer. Okay, uh, but I do pray for you guys. Good, because we definitely need we it. yeah. But no, yes, I do pray for for the for others. I pray for myself that our hearts would be ready. Yeah, that we be ready to receive God's word, uh, and that it would propel me to. I want my prayer when I go in is that I would come away loving God more. Yeah, like that's that's my simplest prayer. God, let this not be a waste of my time. I know that sounds really weird to say, but I I. I want to go. Yeah, I mean, that's on us if it is. And um, so, yeah. We well, pray. maybe, maybe not. I feel like it's also on me. I feel it's no, on that's me. What, that's what I'm saying. Oh, I thought you meant us as a church. No, like, no. The, the church fails. No, I, I think it's, I think it's on, it's on me if worship, if I don't get yes, anything. I agree with that because too often we come in cold. Yeah. We come in cold. We come in flustered. You know, we come in already, you know, how many, how many fights are happening on a Sunday morning between uh, a husband and wife? Because things are getting ready, you're yeah. you're late. You don't want to be late. You don't want to be embarrassed. You don't want this. Your I'm kids' hair is a mess. My kids don't have their shoes on. Diaper ain't changed. They're just a wreck, and we're just rolling on into church uh, in this storm. All right, man. So we've been doing this for a while now. We've been promoting uh, Audible dot com and how people can sign up with Audible, get a free audiobook. They don't pay for it at all. They can keep it even if they cancel their uh, their trial. And um, if they want to support us they can check this out and it will actually help support the podcast so for listeners of doctrine and devotion audible is offering this deal um you sign up for their 30-day free trial to check out their service you can see all the books that they got you can check out the samples and you will get a free audiobook they got a ton of good christian theology uh as well as fiction and literature great books you choose any one you want, doesn't matter how big it is. We've been promoting Calvin's Institute, which is, I don't know how big it is. You said 67 hours. 67 hours, free, boom, get it. You get that, uh, even if you cancel the service the next day, uh, you keep that audiobook. But you might not want to. You might want to stay with audible.com, uh, audibletrial.com, because, uh, man, listening to books is a great way to supplement. Uh, you're reading when you don't have time to read or when you're driving. And if you just don't like reading, then this is a great way to go. So be sure and, and check out audibletrial.com slash doctrine. I like this that you, you know, you talked about how do you prepare for worship? Because I expected you to say, well, you know, I go over the text, you know, and I pray about it. And I just try to get my heart right. But I love that you were like, no, part of preparing for worship is setting out the shoes and the clothes the night before and the socks. My kids got to have their socks so that they're not, um, so that we're not stressed out That's and going right. bananas. And, you know, like, I, I'll be honest, we can't find Killian's shoes every day. Every day he puts them somewhere yeah. else and we're running around. So to do that on, on the – people don't think it's a spiritual thing, but it, it, it is going to facilitate That's it. That's a, a the very part, spiritual the facilitation thing. of worship. Yeah, definitely. I, I what do you guys do? Uh, yeah, we do the same thing, really. I mean, we don't, we don't get the shoes ready. That's for sure. Um, but we prepare the kids that they, they know what's going on and, uh, they call it church day. And, um, and yeah, we, we, we go over that. Like I go over the text mm -hmm. and, uh, like Travel was preaching this Sunday. Yep. So I went out on the porch in the morning and had a cigar and, uh, read his passage. Yeah, Psalm I, saw 73. I shared it and, um, man, it was just, uh, you know, to get my heart ready because I need, I mean, I, I need God's grace mm -hmm. every day. And there is an abundance of grace. There is special grace uh, on the Lord's Day when we when we gather. So mostly uh, prepare uh, by okay. uh, by prayer and and word. So then, how do you engage in worship? So on when we're in when you're, when we're there, um, it's because you, you, you can go and not engage. You can go and disengage. Yeah. You can go and, and fall asleep. I just kind of sit there. Stand I've there. preached to some snoozers before. Um, <laughs> So <laughs> is that so discouraging? I always, nah, I'm always like, yeah, I get it. I, I mean, people are tired. I call them out afterwards. So that depends. Usually, they're you know. I've had someone fall asleep right in front 
And I knew I know the guy. Oh, I know the guy. Yeah, you know the guy. I know the guy. You don't have to tell me who the guy <laughs> is. He fell asleep. So he noticed that I noticed that he was asleep. And so he sat there. And so I just kept staring at him the whole time. <laughs> Make him stay awake. And, 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 I, and I kept staying on that side of the room. Yeah. And I kept, I was trying not to laugh. Yeah. Because I thought this is hilarious. Did Scott, I mean, did the guy laugh? <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> How did I know? His, his name was not Scott. That's oh, it the best part. No. Oh, okay. No, no, no. It was not Scott. Okay, that's good. This person also held a sign that said "boring" once while I was preaching. <laughs> now you remember who it was? I think so. Oh gosh, I was like, "Come on, dude!" Not while I'm preaching. So you know, to to engage in worship means to give attention and to remain focused and to participate, right? So when the um, when someone is praying. For the offering, I'm not just hearing them pray or tuning them out. I'm praying with them. I need to pray with them. This is something that we're doing together. When um, when we're singing songs, I am I am consciously uh, I need to consciously direct my energies. You know, my 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 singing this proclamation to the Lord. I'm not just yeah. making a noise. I'm making a joyful noise to my God in singing. So you know. Engaging in worship, I think, is you know what people would say is like be present. You know, don't just be there, but be fully present, mm-hmm. be aware, be be a participant, and um, and, and give it your 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 attention in such a way like you should be, uh, you should be kind of tired after worship. I yeah. feel like you know, like you've really engaged and it's been. I mean, you might. Feel and that doesn't great. mean like you're jumping around doing right. cartwheels. Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. Because it's like you know, for me, I feel like. Um, you know those so- like okay this last Sunday worship was was amazing I'm, mm-hmm. I was so blessed by it the sermon was great yeah and I, I felt like man, oh listen to it I felt good and I felt encouraged I felt convicted but I felt encouraged and I was like yeah I just need to kind of chill now and think about this you know it was it was it was good that way um, so I think yeah that's that's the main idea mm-hmm. I think a big thing in, in in terms of engaging in worship is is fighting against the distractions. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, I am addicted to my phone. Like, I'm addicted to Instagram, as people know. I'm addicted to Instagram. I'm addicted to Facebook. I've always got to be checking. So uh, part of that is just turning my phone off. Right. Right? Like, actually just turning it off, laying it aside. We tell people to do that. Well, from, from we tell people to silent it. Or turn it off. We say, turn it off. Or, you know, okay, but silent. I have to turn it off. I can't just silence it. But something. we say that because we don't want it to be a distraction to other people. Oh, but it's what, what you're saying is like, yeah, I can, I can sound it. I'll still be. I am. I, I can get really distracted. I'm. You should give your wife your your uh, your phone when you get there. Oh, I can't. That's that's when? my baby. Yeah. Well, listen. I'm just saying, if you want to really focus, you know, strategies, oh, man. Strategies. strategies. All I know is I I turn it off or silence it, and I put it in the what is that thing? Seat pocket in front of you. Yeah. So I put it in that thing and just try to stay away. So part of that for me being fighting the distraction is, yeah. is putting it away, um, not sitting by certain people. And I mean that like not because they're a distraction, uh, but because I like them so much, I'm going to distract them. Yeah, it could be tempted to to joke around because exactly. like, we'd like to joke around. That's and it, it. Could, it can be tempting to to not take something serious that we should be taking serious. That's right. In a particular moment, so making sure you know where you're sitting. If if you're easily distracted, uh, sit more towards the front. Yeah. Right. Like uh, if if your phone's an issue, either give it to your give it to your spouse or. Put it away. Yeah, it leave it in the car. Away. Leave it in the. What do you need it for? Oh, that's too far away, though. Not like like I, some away. of our guys like you know, and like Brian. Brian, when he, when Pastor Brian goes to worship, the dude is dialed in. He's focused. Yeah, and he's his phone is on the whole time. He's staring at it the whole time because that's where his Bible's at. His Bible is on his phone. And, yeah, yeah, me too, me too. <laughs> How come yours has moving pictures? Well, whatever. Okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so it's um like so like some people are great. They don't yeah. have that issue. But I think understanding what distracts you and being prepared for those distractions. That's right. Like your kids, like you know, sometimes sometimes our kids are doing something that we find annoying, but nobody else is even exactly. noticing. Exactly. Let it go. Uh, don't fine. let that distract you. Let your kid be a kid. And now if my kid starts squeezing the water bottle, yeah, yeah that's annoying. It's too loud. I take it away because it's going to distract other people. That's it. But just because they're, you know, kicking their feet up and down, you know, as they hang from the chair, like that's, that's not know. a big deal. Now, but, we, like, but we can get like allow ourselves to get distracted by that. Yeah. I mean, sometimes Cohen will like turn around and he'll be distracting others yeah. and I'll deal with that because yeah, he wants around. to play with, you know, he wants to play with the other kids or because there's members of our community group that are around us. He wants to talk to the adults Yeah, because he. He gets to talk to them every Bible study night. He loves Bible study night. Uh, but yeah, so 
and but the reality is like I'm never I am very rarely distracted by somebody else's kid. Yeah, no, I'm not. Especially very rarely. especially like happy baby noises, like loud exactly. babies that are happy. That doesn't bother it's me. It's a baby. Now if the baby's ba- screaming and carrying on, I want you walk 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 out. And the, you know what? You doors. usually do. That's yeah. just it. Yeah, people, people do. Know. It, but you know, when I'm saying a screaming but, baby is just like a scream baby's different. Then, and you're gonna you're gonna take care of that. You're, yeah. But if your kid's just making a little bit of noise, it's a baby. Yeah. It's yeah. fine. It's not distra- It's cute. Yeah, it's cute. I I um, I think that uh, some people are distracted. Uh, we I think we can all be distracted when a song comes up that we have to sing mm-hmm. that we don't like. I don't know where you're going. Okay. Yeah. So like uh, Jen doesn't like it when songs are turned down too slow. She doesn't like that. I hear about it. She's like, wow, a lot of a lot of slow songs today. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's just how it kind of worked out. You know, we tried to mix up the tempo. And she was like, okay, just noticed it was kind of distracting. And I, I don't know if she is actually distracted by it. Though I, I, yeah, it just, hasn't ruined her Sunday no, morning. But, like, when when a song comes up that you don't like, if it's not heresy, um, and you're like, oh, this is – you can allow yourself to be distracted simply because you find the melody annoying. That's right. There are some really bad melodies out there uh, for some songs that are otherwise good, lyrically. Yeah. So how do you do that? What what happens when a song comes up, or uh, you know a pastor is uh, is up there, and maybe you don't like the way he enunciates or something? Maybe yeah. he's got mannerisms that annoy you. How do you deal with those situations? Like, what do you do to fight that distraction? I get over it. I mean, I don't know how else to word it than that. And maybe maybe I'm being rude, or when I say that, and I, and I think, and when I say that, I don't. I'm not insinuating that Jen is not over that. Like, I think. Like I mentioned, I don't think it's ruined her Sunday morning, but I know you're I have very been, concerned that Jen, that you don't get on Jen's bad side. I can tell you're like really trying to. Jen be, is like the only good part of you. Yeah. So you don't want to ruin that. I don't want to ruin that. Um, and I know I'm already on thin ice with Jen, so I need to make sure uh, that I talk about how great Jen Thorne is. Make sure you head on over to her blog. It's fantastic. She is wonderful. You know why she she she. She's annoyed because we text too much. I know. I wasn't. I wasn't thinking we, you were going to say it. You, you Facetime me a lot. And well, hold on. You Facetime me. No, you face. I don't Facetime you. I don't <sighs> like Facetiming. You fa- All right. You know what? You sent me, and I got it on my phone. You you send me heartbeats. Now that you learn, that's how not to- Facetime. That's okay, but it's still something. Yeah. No, I will text you. We text, but you Facetime. That's your thing. I like Facetime. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, it, okay. So Regardless. how do you, how do you deal with the distractions? You just get over it. Well. I it's be hard a little for me more to get past, over it. Get a little, be a little more pastoral. What I that. mean by that is, I take it to the Lord and ask Him to change my heart, because there's some things that are gospel issues, and there's other things that are preferent, like preference. Yep. And Sunday morning is not about my preferences. You're never going to find the perfect church. You're never going to find people doing everything that you want them to do in the exact same way uh, that you would do them yourself. Yeah. And so you need to be okay with that. You got to learn to not be critical. But be appreciative of the things that of the things that God is doing there now. And think about it. Imagine how like distracting you could be to God. <laughs> I mean, like <laughs> you you are a sinner, uh, finite, and s- still corrupt, and your singing has got to just. How can that compare to? perfected music that's created by God, but he accepts it and he rejoices in it, not because you're so good at it, yeah, but because it's offered in faith and it's been perfected by Jesus. So, yeah, I think we ought to have that gospel uh, lens and humility. That- and charity, gospel charity yeah. towards others and, and towards the church. All right. We wrote down one more question, Jimmy. What is the fruit of worship? Or if we go and we worship corporately well, if it's, if it's an offering done in faith What's the consequence? I think there should be joy. I think we should be coming away overjoyed uh, by who God is and what he has done because we're reminded um, at church of the love of God for us and the great lengths that God has gone uh, to secure us. Yeah. And I think, you know, yeah, we're edified. There's a call of action to obedience, but I, there's always that reminder, at least for us, because we are gospel centered. That, yeah, we're called to obey God and we need to work on that. Like we need to to move in that direction. But there's still an understanding that we receive Jesus's perfect obedience mm-hmm. uh, on our 
it's credited to our account, yeah, as, yeah. as some would say. So I'm still overjoyed. I, I should be coming away loving God more, mm-hmm. humble, um, and just thankful for what God has done. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I always think about it in terms of like being convicted where I need to be convicted and encouraged where I need to be encouraged. Mm-hmm. And I, I agree. I think joy is is sh- needs to be there. It needs to be the the natural byproduct. Now, that's not happiness in a worldly sense, and it's not determined by our circumstances. Yeah. It transcends all of that. But the other thing that I think about is being prepared. I think the consequence of worshiping the Lord uh, well, worshiping Him rightly, is we walk away and we are prepared now for what God has next for us. We have just encountered uh, the truth of God in, I think, a dramatic way. I think the, the Lord's Day uh, and, and corporate worship is dramatic in the preaching and in the singing, and I think it prepares us for uh, both the, the blessings and the difficulties that await us. All right, man, listen. Uh, this is a long one. What about, uh, what about recos? What recommendations? Uh, what do you... Uh, well, first, I'm like? going to start off with uh, Christ-centered worship. Uh, Chapel by yeah by Brian Chapel. He he also did Christ-centered preaching, which yep. we talked about before. It's a good book. Uh, so this is Christ-centered worship, letting the gospel shape our practice, and so that the church's worship has always been shaped by its understanding of the gospel. And so uh, that's what what Brian is is steering us towards. Okay, um, I'm going to recommend a book by. My friend, now our friend. No, no, my best friend. Yeah, Mike. No, Cosper. Mike. Mike. Mike and I. Yeah. MC. Yeah, he just texted me uh, yes last night and today. So I guess. Oh, he uh, Facetimed me earlier. Yeah, no, he didn't. <laughs> uh, Mike Cosper wrote a book called Rhythms of Grace. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a great book on on corporate worship, and uh, I would encourage you guys uh, to pick that one up. It's it's definitely uh, a complimentary book to you know Christ centered worship or Worship Matters yeah. by Bob Coughlin. It's another good book. Now, Anything what, else? What about give God or give praise to God? Oh, that's that uh, collection yeah. of of writings uh, in honor of uh, James Boyce, not the Baptist Boyce, the Presbyterian Boyce. Uh, man, that guy was awesome. Mm-hmm. I, I can't wait to meet him in heaven. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's that's definitely a really good book. I only, I've only peeked at that. I haven't read it, but it looks really good. Man, there's a book that I have over here. It is called A Remedy for Wandering Thoughts. In Worship by Richard Steele. Ooh. You want to get this book. Now, this is, this is uh, it's, you know, it's, it's an archaic book. You know, someone could say the language is a bit. I don't think I've read that archaic. one. Archaic. It's, uh, you're going to want to get it. Dude. All right, I'm going to get it's it. It's really good. Um, Send me a link on Amazon. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's in the show notes, everybody. Boom, you can I'm check it out. That one. Let me see it. Let me, can I borrow yours? Let me you, well, you can look at it. I know, but I don't, I don't trust know. you to take it out of here. It. You'll make it smell like cigars. If, oh, like it doesn't already smell like cigars. It might. <laughs> it does. We want to give a big thanks to Justin Bond. Nice, he is our print. engineer. He is our editor, and he makes us sound good. He, he puts this podcast together. Jimmy and I record it, but then he does all of the magic. So big thanks to Justin Bond at J Bond Media. J Bond! If you have audio, video, uh, photo needs, uh, this is the guy to hire. Don't play around. Uh, with any of those other jokers, hit up Justin Bond. If you want to uh, help us out as a podcast, you can leave us reviews at iTunes or Stitcher or any of those places that you guys use to listen to the podcast. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Dr. Dr. Devo. Devo. You can uh, check us out on Facebook slash Doctor and Devotion and like the page. Uh, and you can, you, know, you can leave a comment for us uh, through the website. You go to our website and you click on the Contact Us page, and there you can send us a message. We get, I, I was looking the other day. It looks like we get about five to six new emails every day. Yeah, that's we it. get a, we get a lot of messages. So it's like wow. Well, and not just and that's just emails. That's, yeah, it's not, yeah, that's we, not including the Facebook messages, the Instagram messages, and the Twitter messages that yeah, we get. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty crazy. So uh, we we read them all, and we're trying to respond whenever a response is necessary. Mm-hmm. So we'd love to hear your ideas, your thoughts, uh, your critiques, and uh, please tell a friend. Bam, if, sharing is caring. Yeah, that's whatever. I don't know what that means, but when uh, you share it, that means you care about it. One and say, because you not only care about that, you care about the other person. Because so you want to sharing share. is caring. No, no. Sharing is caring because when you're sharing it, it's because you care about that person. You want to give them that. But which it sounds is like good. the emphasis is on the sharing, not the caring. You sharing. should say caring. You should say caring is sharing. Caring. If you care about people, nope. Sharing is sharing. Caring is sharing. Uh, so tell a friend. Yep. So we got what? 
One coming out today, and then another one coming out a few days later. Mondays yep, and Thursdays. Every Monday and Thursday. Check it out. Uh, we are looking forward to, uh, man, the next one, we're going to talk about idolatry. Idolatry. That's going to be do fun. it. All right. See you guys. Later. Later.